Oh, that's a hi, hi, Carrie. Can everyone hear me? I just turned my yes. mic on for the first time. Great. Um, hi, Carrie. Thanks for your question. Um, so we actually discuss arrivals in in the uh, full paper. You know, just didn't have time for it in a short talk. Um, we don't have strong theoretical results in this case. Um, you know, in, in in general, that problem is sort of as hard as an MGK uh, kind of problem. Um, but uh, what we do find is that we can use this offline policy and calculate allocations on every departure and arrival. And in simulation, this policy outperforms many other policies from the literature by about an order of magnitude with respect to slowdown. Awesome. Hey, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Celine next. Um, hello. Um, hi. First, so thank you for your great talk. It was really nice to hear it. Um, I just had a question um, about, like, when you think of the power consumption, it may not always be interesting to use all servers, I guess. And um, I can imagine that you can just, if you know how much it costs to use the servers, you may be able to write an optimization program, but um, do you have an intuition on how much it would change the solution if you if you take this into account? Um, that that's a really great question. So um, it's hard to know what a user's preferences over power consumption are, right? So um, you can imagine finding a place where sort of the marginal cost of the additional servers worth of power is equal to the marginal benefit from running. Um, you know, your your job a few seconds faster. But you have to have some model, I think, of um, users' preferences over uh, sort of completion time, flow time versus energy. And that's something that we don't consider at all in this model. But if you if you were to have some model of that, I, you know, I do think that it just adds an, a dimension to the optimization problem. I think with totally general utility curves there, it, it is probably a hard non-convex optimization problem, but maybe there's some simplifying assumptions. I just don't know enough really about what those curves look like in practice. Um, but I, I think it's totally a great question. And, and, and this, this pops up both in the server case, you know, in a data center, but also frequently in multi-core architectures where you have the ability to do things like DBFS or, you know, there are all sorts of interesting power management um, questions. So I think it's a really great uh, area for future work. You are muted, Denise. All right. <laughs> we have a question from Tay on Slack. Tay, would you like to ask it yourself? Hi, uh, so your, I think in one of your earlier curves, you, as the number of servers, when you describe, when you distribute to servers, as the number of servers increases, the, you plateau. But what if it doesn't plateau? What if it's, uh, non, uh, it increases and decreases? Then what, how does that affect what you do? Um, that, that's a good question. So um, if the function is actually decreasing, right? I think it's fairly safe to assume that, you know, if, if you could measure this thing offline, you would sort of never run at an allocation where where the speed up function is lower than another point, right? So so if you have a function that both increases and decreases, I think you can at least imagine that a user could get something like the concave hull of that shape, right? Just by saying, you know, if it's worse for me to run with five servers than it is to run with four servers, then I can assume that when I'm allocated five servers, I'll, I'll just use four of them or, or, or whatever, right? So, so you can at least imagine that my speed up function is something like the concave hull of some increasing and decreasing function. Um, if the function is non-concave, which um, there are some things that can cause that in practice. Um, so that's not that the function is necessarily decreasing, but just that there are sort of flat spots where I don't scale as well due to certain network effects or memory effects and things like that. Um, that is theoretically, you know, problematic for us. We exploit the concavity of the speed up function in, in our proofs. Um, 
but you know, I, I would generally say that if you look at jobs that run on increasing numbers of servers, those non-concave effects tend to be small on, on the small side compared to overall trends, which are real, which really do follow the sort of more concave speed up function. Or you can just fit it with something concave. Right, right, way. exactly. So, so, so more generally, and I think I, I'm not sure if it was you who asked this or, or if it was someone else in the Slack channel that I saw was asking about the shape of the speed up curves, right? And right. Um, you know, our, our, our opinion is not really that every job exactly follows, uh, you know, some power law speed up, but just that the family of power law speed up functions is a good um, sort of regression tool that can be used to fit. Um, so real life speed up curves, and and we have examples of, of in the paper where we're able to closely fit um, workloads from the Parsec three benchmark, which is a, a popular parallelizable benchmark. Thank you. Okay, I think we have some time for another, at least another question. I just want to remind everyone that the discussion on Slack can continue after the session ends, in case there isn't time to get to your question. I want to quickly ask a question that's on the, the web chat in WebEx because they couldn't access the Slack for some reason. Um, so I'll just ask it for them. This is a question by Amber Puha. Um, as I understand it, uh, you're minimizing the total expected sojourn time, which is referred to as flow time. Which does, what, what distributional assumptions are you making on the processing times? Um, so, so to be clear about the scenario that we're considering, right? We're considering a case where job sizes are known perfectly to the system, um, and and jobs are present at time zero. And uh, and as I mentioned, you you know we consider the online case with arrivals um, in simulation in the paper. But as a result, uh, we make no distributional assumptions on the actual sizes of the jobs, right? So as long as the job sizes are known to the system. Um, they can be drawn from whatever distribution. They can be wildly variable. They can be all the same size. But our solution doesn't leverage any distributional assumptions um, about job sizes. Okay. And Pete has a question on Slack. Pete. You're muted. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, it's just about the you assuming uh, fixed job sizes. If, if the job sizes aren't uh, known, but you know them, you can approximate it with a random variable with a given distribution. Can you extend to that situation? Um, so that's not something that we have have considered at this point. Um, we we have some other work uh, that that deals with jobs which are either sort of exponential or or um, phase type. Uh -huh. distribution distributed um that is some of that's been published and some of that's sort of work in progress um but the general unknown job size case we still haven't tackled um and yeah i, I think that's an area for for future work i think um some of the analysis that we've done here is sort of amenable to existing mm -hmm. techniques dealing with with unknown job sizes but but in general right you know i like to think of you know if you put exponential distributions at one side where you really have no job size information even as you run things you would put this work sort of at the other end of the spectrum where you know everything perfectly and then once you introduce more general distributions now you're 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 making the same kinds of calculations trying to weigh system efficiency and job size but you also have to hedge for the fact that you might not uh you might learn that you were wrong about a particular job size you have to sort of account for your your confidence there so um, I think it would be interesting to see if you could adapt something like a Gittins index based policy here um, to at least establish like job priorities based on not maybe not expected remaining times, but, you know, some metric, some index related to uh, conditional distributions, but uh, it's an area for future work. Okay. You're muted, Nidhi. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for questions. Um, but again, please continue on.